this is Rev Beth. How about a few good words about sex? And particularly, what about erotica? Now you'll notice I'm not going to define erotica or pornography. That's because that battle usually ends with what I enjoy is erotica, what you enjoy is porn. The good news is that research tells us that what we see can normalize certain behaviors. So if someone is a bit uptight or sexually inexperienced, then viewing erotica could be quite helpful to them. The bad news is that what we see can normalize certain behaviors. And unfortunately, much of erotica is focused on body parts and body mechanics and body positions and leaves out much of the good stuff, like the dance of intimacy itself and the laughter. And since we know that most erotica is made by men and for men, then it's no wonder that it leaves a lot of people kind of cold. And we most certainly do not use erotica for our sex information. So there are lots of reasons why erotica might not be helpful to us, but not for the ones that you hear touted by the preachers. You see, the most powerful sex organ is our minds. And engaging this part of the anatomy does wonderful things for our bodies, and by extension for our lovers and for the sexual experience itself. That is what erotica does for us. And as a result, it can be used as foreplay for our minds and our bodies to get prepared for our partners, or as a substitute if our partner is not available. Using erotic photos and films, for example, can stimulate our imaginations and our fantasy life. But some would ask whether or not it's okay for righteous or moral people to fantasize and use erotica. So I would ask, is there anything in our minds that is bad? And to that I would say, no. A resounding no. Thinking is not sin, and sexual thoughts are not dangerous. Let me repeat that. Thinking is not sin, and sexual thoughts are not dangerous. What we do with our thoughts, of course, is another thing, and the Bible uses the eyes as a metaphor to the gateway to our actions. It says, if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body is full of darkness. And in fact, Jesus said, if you think or feel an emotion like anger or lust, then you have already done the behavior. But he was not telling us not to think or feel. Jesus' teaching here is to tell us to be aware that all of our behavior begins first as a thought. In other words, he's saying, monitor your thoughts so you don't slip into bad behavior. And that is wise advice indeed. So when someone is looking at erotica, what are they usually thinking? Well, they're usually fantasizing about having sex with that anonymous person. Is that bad or a sin? Well, it is if the gateway to your sanity is wide open and you are stampeding out trying to find that person to force sex on them against their will at all cost. That insatiable greed perfectly describes King David with Bathsheba. It is ego-centered and it is blind to the other person's needs. It comes from a hardened heart so that the person can't see or understand their actions. This insatiable greed that is grounded in covetousness is lust and it is condemned soundly in the Bible. Now, contrary to what most people say, however, all of these warm and wonderful sexual responses to erotica is not lust. It is horniness. And that is a perfectly normal sexual response. And there's a big difference between the insatiable greed of lust and simply being horny. I can assure you, there is no research that indicates people turn to criminal behavior of sexual assault or rape simply because they have happened to look at erotica. Instead, viewing erotica can help us enjoy the good feelings that God gives us for being alive as sensual and sexual creatures. So, dump the guilt, dump the shame. 
get some well-selected erotica that works for you if you're so inclined and share it with your partner if they are interested. It might increase the playfulness. Invite your erotic fantasies of movie stars or the neighbors or the landlord or better yet, design a totally fictitious person who is the ultimate imperfection for you. Just remember, fantasies and realities are usually quite different. But using the fantasy of erotica might make the reality a bit hotter. And that's good. That's very good. This is Rev Bev. Remember, sex is good. Practice safe sex and God loves you.